I'm Tyler Gandon, Mayor for the City of Otasquan, and I'll open today by recognizing that the sacred Treaty 6 land on which we gather and thrive is linked to the histories, languages, and cultures of many First Peoples of Canada. The City of Otasquan continues to build relationships with and learn from our Indigenous neighbours, and we remain grateful for their teachings. Well, the reason we are meeting virtually is due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. It has now been a full year since our community was first impacted by the virus, and I want to acknowledge anyone whose life was touched by loss since the pandemic started. Whether this loss was a result of COVID or you were unable to attend the funeral of a loved one due to the public health restrictions, this has not been an easy year. While most of us have struggled at some point during the pandemic, we have also come together and supported each other in incredible ways. I invite you to join me on a journey through time as I highlight both city and community initiatives, accomplishments and successes from March of last year to now. Let's begin. In March of last year, Wetaskiwin's a and Restaurant won the prestigious President's Award for 2019 at the annual a and Convention. The President's Award, given to the a and that demonstrates an outstanding achievement in sales and operating standards while exemplifying the a and mission, is the highest accolade an a and store can achieve. Congratulations again to Colleen and her team on this monumental success. On March 10th, the City of Wetaskiwin activated its Emergency Operations Centre in response to COVID-19. One day before the World Health Organization declared the novel coronavirus outbreak a global pandemic. Activating our Emergency Operations Centre enabled the City to redirect resources to effectively address public safety, access to information and ensure the continuity of municipal services. Given the rapid spread of the virus, having quick and reliable access to COVID-related information throughout the pandemic was critical for the safety and well-being of our community. To meet this need, a standalone mobile response portal was developed to serve as a trusted source of information about the virus, facility closures, public health restrictions, available business supports, and mental health resources. Economic resiliency during the pandemic was of significant concern to the city, and we helped support our businesses through the development of an economic disaster mitigation and business resilience strategy. Extending the 2020 property tax payment deadline, deferring late penalties on city utility accounts, suspension of the plastic bag ban bylaw enforcement, and business support grants, which were made possible through a partnership with the Chamber. In the midst of the change associated with the early stages of the pandemic, an important change also occurred within our organization. City Council hired Sue Howard to fill the role of City Manager March of last year. Sue has served in multiple roles with the City of Wetaskiwin since first joining the team in 2016, including various director positions and acting CAO. Since taking on the City Manager role, Sue has been instrumental in ensuring organizational transparency, responsible governance, and has helped transform our organizational culture to one of collaboration and inclusion. Thank you, Sue for all your hard work thus far. The 2020 Wetaskiwin Community Profile, made possible through community and regional economic support funding in partnership with Central Alberta Economic Partnership, was published in March. The Community Profile is a database profile of the City of Wetaskiwin, which highlights demographics and labour force trends and showcases information about transportation, development, taxes and utilities, business support programs and overall quality of life. This living document helps determine where the city is today, highlighting areas that present opportunities and challenges moving forward, and is a useful resource for prospective residents, business developers, and investors. In April, Wetaskiwin City Council amended the Council Meeting Procedural Bylaw to include an open microphone session for all regular Council meetings. This gives community members another avenue of communication with City Council. Those wishing to speak must register with the legislative clerk before the start of the meeting and provide their name, address, and the topic of their presentation. We've had a number of people capitalize on this option already, so don't be shy. Council passed Property Tax Bylaw 1961-20 in April of 2020, resulting in a net municipal tax rate decrease of 2.41% for both residential and non-residential properties. As mentioned previously, 
We also extended the tax payment deadline from the end of June to the end of September to help reduce the financial strain on taxpayers due to the pandemic. City Council designated the Wetaskiwin Peace Cairn as a municipal historic resource in April, as well to protect it from being moved again. The Wetaskiwin Peace Cairn is a unique symbol of multiculturalism and collaboration that remains as important now as it was back in 1927 when it was erected. The city consulted with Musquachee elders and leadership throughout the relocation process, and a series of traditional Cree pipe ceremonies were held in accordance with Cree custom. As a shared cultural monument, an important part of the Peace Cairn's rededication is the ongoing dialogue with our Cree neighbours on bringing our communities together. But this work can't be shouldered by the community's leaders alone. Those living or working in the Wetaskiwin region need to be part of this dialogue as well. Racism remains a serious social issue and these prejudices have no place in the 21st century. It is time for us all to learn from each other and live in harmony. Our communities are stronger when we work together on innovative and connective solutions to our shared challenges. Thank you, especially to the Wetaskiwin and District Heritage Museum for sharing in this important work. The 2020 Community Safety and Policing Priority Survey results were finalized and published in May. Participants were asked several questions, including where they live and what they feel should be the top policing priorities for their area. Respondents also had the option to provide additional details about their feelings and thoughts on community safety. According to the data, the three top policing priorities identified by city residents were major property crime, crimes against persons, and, mo and minor property crime. These same priorities were also selected by county residents in the 2020 survey. Getting feedback annually is very important in helping council gauge our community's sense of safety, both in Wetaskiwin and the surrounding areas. We continue to partner with Wetaskiwin's RCMP in the development of this annual survey and use the information supplied, along with the data provided by the RCMP, to guide the development of our community policing plan. This year's Community Safety and Policing Priorities Survey remains open for submissions until March 18th. If you live or work in the city or county of Wetaskiwin, town of Millet, or Camrose County, please take a few minutes to share your thoughts. In May, Wetaskiwin City Council passed the Family and Community Support Services Governing Board Bylaw 1963-20, establishing FCSS as its own governing body. This governance change allows Wetaskiwin FCSS to apply for additional grants and access other funding opportunities as it will no longer be considered for profit. To highlight another fantastic community initiative, fully promoted Wetaskiwin and the Chamber of Commerce joined forces in May 2020 to create a We Are Here Wetaskiwin t-shirt line which supported local businesses and nonprofits by distributing proceeds from each t-shirt purchased. Kudos to everyone involved, from the initial development of the initiative to all those who supported it. In June, the city launched its Community Painted Crosswalks program. Administration worked with community groups and organizations who wanted to paint a crosswalk in Wetaskiwin. We saw a few crosswalks painted by community members throughout 2020. If you or your organization are interested in showcasing your artistic talent, with a local crosswalk as the canvas, contact the city for more information. Another great community initiative that launched in June was a locally produced music video titled, Everywhere I Go, co-produced by Carmen Ray and Dale Atchison. They wanted to let the community know that although we're enduring a pandemic, there's still hope and people can still find ways to be together. Canada Day looked a lot different last year due to the public health restrictions, but we all still managed to find a way to celebrate. The city facilitated a community-wide Canada Day decorating contest, which saw 42 amazing entries. Wetaskiwin FCSS also hosted a virtual scavenger hunt. The Heritage Museum invited community members to take photos with Milo, the museum sloth, and the Legion put on a small pancake breakfast and Canada Day ceremony. I'm hoping that we can up the ante this year depending on restrictions, of course. Diversity and inclusion is important to Council, and on July 20th, we made a motion directing administration to propose strategies that could be used to develop a citywide campaign to help our community feel secure, connected, and included. Since then, a variety of strategies have been implemented with this focus in mind, 
including a Welcome in Wetaskiwin residential attraction campaign, equity, diversity and inclusion training for city employees, and a community-led diversity and inclusion task force. By August of 2020, we were all pretty much done with the COVID-19 pandemic and its far-reaching impacts. At least we could all buy toilet paper again. The lumber and summer sporting goods were hard to find for a while. In September of last year, the city launched its 50-year community visioning initiative, which will create a long-term community-built vision for Wetaskiwin. This vision will guide what the city will look like in 50 years and help us all better understand what it'll take to get there. Thank you to those who participated. We ended up hearing from over a thousand community members. We are very excited to debut the community vision, which will be happening later this spring. Last fall, the City of Wetaskiwin entered into an Intermunicipal Collaboration Framework, or ICF agreement, with the County of Wetaskiwin. An ICF is a tool to facilitate cooperation between neighboring municipalities ensuring municipal services are provided in an efficient and cost-effective manner. Some of the services that these ICFs highlight include recreation, mutual aid agreements, road use, and other areas of mutual agreement and cooperation. As part of the ICF process, both councils approved bylaws establishing an intermunicipal committee which will help strengthen relations between both councils. Council voted to temporarily close the City of Wetaskiwin archives to the public in September to examine archives, current portfolio, and assets. This decision allows the City to both review the collection and consult with local agencies and organizations on how the archives can best serve the needs of the community while positioning it for long-term success. Once Council receives a report from administration, we will be able to set a long-term vision for Wetaskiwin's archives. At the end of September, I was acclaimed to the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, AUMA, Board of Directors for a second consecutive term and will continue to represent Alberta cities with populations up to 500,000. This is a tremendous opportunity to be a part of the work that AUMA does advocating for Alberta municipalities, which is a benefit to our city as well. City Council passed an updated tax incentive bylaw as well at the end of September designed to attract growth, encourage development, and bring new investment to the City of Wetaskiwin. Bylaw 1970-20 widens the scope of the non-residential property tax incentive to include large-scale commercial developments. It also gives provisions for incentives for the municipal portion of the non-residential property taxes for both industrial developments and expansions and new commercial developments. In October, City Council voted to decrease the natural gas distribution franchise fee charged to the ATCO gas from 35% to 33%, which took effect January 1st. Council heard loud and clear from the community that a decrease to not only property taxes, but also franchise fees through our utility providers was desired. As we continue to find efficiencies in our operations, we will be able to further identify cost savings that can be passed along to our residents and business owners. Congratulations to John Maud and Susan Quinn, founders of the John Maud and Susan Quinn Charitable Foundation on receiving the 2020 AUMA Above and Beyond Award. I had the distinct pleasure to present the award to John and Susan at the regular October 26th council meeting. The John Maud and Susan Quinn Charitable Foundation was nominated by the city of Wetaskiwin for its outstanding contributions to our community's social sustainability, including sponsoring the purchase of reusable bags for the community at large sponsoring the tree plantings along the Highway 13 East walking path and purchasing solar panels, which were installed on a city facility. Thank you for all you do in our community. In November, the city declared its second state of local emergency of the year. The first was due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but this one was specific to the vulnerable members of our community throughout the cold winter months. On November 12th, the 24-7 Integrated Response Hub began temporarily operating out of the Wetaskiwin Civic Building in an effort to quickly meet the needs of our community's vulnerable humans. While the location was not ideal due to the issues experienced in previous years, 
the integrated response hub hasn't seen a slow day yet. Providing treatment, counseling, and other supports to a large number of clients since their opening. Thank you everyone for your patience and kindness. This is a much needed social service for Wetaskiwin and the city continues to work with the hub in securing a different permanent site for its operations. The city of Wetaskiwin launched a new citizen reporting tool in November that allows residents to easily submit service requests online, including reporting potholes, damage signs, sidewalk cracks, and any other potential hazards. This tool provides each submitter with a file number to follow up on their request with. Those who submit concerns will also be notified once a request has been actioned and completed. At the end of November, it was announced that the city had been selected as a pilot site for a rural crime prevention project through the Canadian Municipal Network on Crime Prevention. The scope of the community safety and well-being plan involves creating and implementing a model to reduce crime and build capacity among service providers within our area. Through this partnership, a long-term strategy will be developed to resolve a number of complex social challenges we face as a community. In December, we launched a whistleblower program as part of our organization's commitment to operate with the highest standards of conduct and ethics. The whistleblower program provides a confidential process for both community members and city employees to report suspected acts of waste or wrongdoing involving members of city council, the city manager, city employees, or city of Wetaskiwin contractors, suppliers, and agencies. Any person who submits a concern through the whistleblower program is protected from reprisal, and procedural fairness is provided for anyone accused of wrongdoing. Whistleblower programs and organizations are critical components of effective corporate governance, and it is important that the community members feel confident that both city council and city staff are being held accountable. I want to clarify that this program is meant for serious concerns such as mismanagement of public funds and unethical conduct. Any other city-related concerns should be directed to the appropriate department or city representative. Mid-December. The city was recognized by the Battle River Watershed Alliance for our municipal sustainability with an Otis Award. The Otis Award recognizes organizations, businesses, and individuals in the Battle River and Sounding Creek watersheds who are outstanding in stewardship. The city received the award due to the low impact development during Main Street's reconstruction, the bioswales used in different locations within the community, and the plastic checkout bag ban bylaw. The Community Engagement Committee had to get creative with the Wetaskiwin Winter Warm-Up Festival due to the pandemic and opted to plan a community-wide decorating contest. Participants decorated their home or business with winter or Christmas theme, and the community voted on their top picks. It was nice to be able to drive around town and see all the amazing entries. To cap off the year, we reported that the city had received just over $20 million in grant funding throughout 2020 from both the provincial and federal governments, as well as Community Food Centers Canada. A large part of our success in obtaining this significant amount of funding is due to the centralizing the grants application function through our grants coordinator, a relatively new position approved as a part of the 2020 municipal budget. Previously, each city department applied for and managed their own grant applications. On January 1st, nominations opened for the City of Wetaskiwin's 2021 general municipal election. The nomination period will close on September 20th, with election day taking place the following month on October 18th. To be eligible to run for municipal office, candidates must be at least 18 years of age on nomination day, a Canadian citizen, and have been a resident of the local jurisdiction for at least six consecutive months preceding nomination day. There are few opportunities to serve your community like you can by being a member of council. My experience over the last two terms has certainly been amazing and I encourage anyone interested in running for election to contact any current or previous member of council to find out more about this important and fulfilling role. In February, the city and Northwest College entered into an agreement to deliver tailored training solutions to the city employees through the establishment of the Wetaskiwin City Academy. This innovative partnership 
will allow the city to build an employee knowledge to enhance service delivery to the local community. Some of the planned offerings include leadership development, customer service, adaptability and resilience, difficult conversations, psychological safety, Indigenous awareness, proposal writing, and business productivity training. The 2021 Municipal Budget Deliberations, originally scheduled for November 2020, took place February 17th, 19th, and 22nd of this year. At the time this presentation was recorded, we had not yet passed the 2021 budget, but this should be the case by the time you see it. Through the budget process, City Council continues to ensure citizens receive value for their tax dollars by standardizing the levels of service provided by each city function. To wrap up this address, I would like to briefly highlight some of the successes we have had as a council over this term. We added to reserves, worked to address tax rate concerns, saw new social programs introduced, helped attract new developments, and we continue to communicate and engage with community members in a variety of ways. We will be making a very exciting announcement soon pertaining to our community safety, so stay tuned. Thank you.